That's me. Everything and anything you want to know right here on my podcast show. Welcome to the House of Pain. Hi. Welcome to the Ron Pain Podcast Show. What's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Ron Payne. Welcome to the show. Got a very special show going on tonight here. Um, as you can tell, I did a little redecorating, as everybody can tell. Got some uh, wrestling no season uh, shirt going on. Uh, just some of the stuff that I wore over the past couple years, but got some special different ones going on here. We got this one right here, which is our Costa Rica Extreme Wrestling shirt from 2013. As everybody knows and remembers, I am uh, the reigning 2013 Prison Wars champion. Of course, I thank you. And then over here, special shirt, NEW Next Evolution Wrestling shirt. Of course, from my days of, uh, you know, being the Next Evolution Tag Team Champion, along with, uh, you know, my old tag team partner, you know, Adam. Not going to mention him right now, though. But, all in all, we're going to have a great show here tonight. Uh, my, my guest tonight is none other than Tracy Anderson of Next Evolution Wrestling. She is one of the owners for uh, Next Evolution. And uh, she's going to be on the show talking to us about some uh, different stuff that's going on with the uh, NEW upcoming shows, what it takes to run a show, how aggravating it is. You know, you take the guess. That is what we're doing tonight. So uh, without actually any further ado, we are going to... Say hi to uh, Miss Tracy Anderson. Hi, Tracy. How we doing? Hi, doing good. How are you? I am doing okay, actually. You know, uh, not doing too bad. It's been a while since we have uh, spoken. It's been a long time since we have spoken, actually. Yep. Well, you know, you moved away, so. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. But you know what? It like for for anybody that's ever seen the show or watched the show, or whatever the case may be. I'm going to put it in perspective this way. Everybody knows the reason why I had left. I had walked away. I Well, yeah, I guess you could say I kind of walked away. I kind of caused a little bit of trouble for NEW back in my wrestling days. And uh, um, we're going to get we're going to dive into that a little bit later, actually. So uh, we'll just leave that up to par for right now and go from there. Um, but uh, Tracy, we're going to get right down to business. We got a lot to talk about. Um, and we got a lot of time to do it in, so let me, uh, let me get right to work here. Um, tell me a little bit about NEW, how it came about. Um, so, so Next Evolution, Evolution Wrestling, Wrestling uh, we, we formed it two years ago. ago. Um, we, we just had, uh, an idea that, that we wanted, wanted it to be just a little bit different, different than the direction that we were formally going in. in. Um, we wanted to cater more towards today's uh, wrestling audience, which is, you know, what you would effectively call the smart mark. You know, people aren't fooled anymore. It's not, um, you don't hide the things that are going on, but you still want to entertain. But you don't want to insult their intelligence either. You know, they want to come to the show, they want to be entertained, but they're also not stupid. So that's kind of the approach that we took. Okay, that's fair. That's definitely fair, uh, fair enough. Um, you know, um, a lot of people, like NEW came out of nowhere and um, you know of course we're gonna dive into that also in a little bit here um, first and foremost um, tell tell everybody that's watching you know a little bit about yourself um, how you came to pursue the the business itself at hand you know what you do in the business you know uh, where you grew up stuff like that um. Well, I was, my father was in the Army, so I was actually born in the and we traveled around a lot. Um, but I have been a wrestling fan since a uh, very small child. We lived in, he was stationed in Alabama um, when I was, I don't know, probably five, six years old, something like that. And we started going to live events. 
and we went to, um, I think it was Mid-South Wrestling, uh, we'd go to the NWA, I saw uh, Dusty Rhodes, and, um, you know, a lot of the old school wrestlers, this is what I grew up watching, and this is one of the things that I did with my father every Saturday, is we watched wrestling, and so I, I grew up loving that. Of course, um, I was the only child for 18 years, so I got to be the boy and the girl, you know, I did the girl things with my mom, the boy things with my dad. So I did a lot of sports with him, and so wrestling was just kind of ingrained. It was one of the things that, that I enjoyed. And then um, I married my husband, and he was also a wrestling fan, and he decided to become a wrestler, and, you know, it just, it just kind of went there. My personality has never been really one to kind of take a back seat to things, so if we're going to be involved, then we're going to be involved. And that's just how it happened. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, I could definitely, uh, I could definitely re relate to that. Um, um, you know, anybody who ever watches any kind of wrestling, whatever the case may be, we've always been very big on our military and everything else like that. Uh, so, uh, from myself here, uh, thank you to your uh, father who has, you know, been in the military service and has done great things for our country. Most definitely. Um, now, you know, you talk about being, being the wife of a wrestler. Uh, what is it like to be a wife of an outlaw, so to speak, <laughs> to ownership w uh, with him? I mean, is there any, I mean, I'm sure there's got to be a lot of like, hey, no, I don't like this. No, wait, well, this is what we're going to do. I mean. From me? No. I'm not bossy at all. That would never happen to me. <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I have always been a guiding force in his life just because that's my personality. And so, you know, um, you, you know, you of all people know how I am. I, you know, there's a reason everybody calls me mama. It's because I tend to say, you know, I love you, but <laughs> this is what you need to do, or I think this is how it should go. And it's just, that's just part of me. And, and, you know, some people like that, and some people hate that, and that's okay. Um, so, you know, when he first got involved in the business, you know, I, I had a hand in kind of tweaking. He had his ideas, and then I helped him tweak his character, and uh, he wasn't always an outlaw. You know, he started out actually... Um, a good guy. People are always love him. He started out as the lumberjack. This is when we were in West Virginia, and we joined forces with the NWA up there. And um, it just kind of grew from there. It went from you know just being his support to you know making his gimmicks and, and doing things for him to um, then helping the company that he was working for because it was ran solely by um, one gentleman and his wife. And so then I went kind of fell into. Helping them, you know, do, I just do what I do. You know, I'm like, hey, I think that I could maybe do this for you. Would you like me to? And they were like, yes. And so the next thing you know, I'm, you know, booking them a thousand dollar show at a college, and that this is back in, you know, the early '90s, so thousand dollars was good money to to book a show, you know. And it just kind of fell from there. Ah, <laughs> all right, that's uh, fair enough. Uh, for those that don't know, um, she's talking about Rick Anderson. He's uh. One half of the outlaws that uh, used to run a muck over in uh, Costa Real Extreme Wrestling, and uh, you know now he's uh, one of the owners as well. He's also done uh, a couple shows here and there with uh, NEW as well. Um, I remember uh, one specific show to where um, I went to go put him through a table, and I kind of went through myself and kind of had to get stretchered out. But uh, you know that was also a fun show. It was the most moist like day I could ever imagine in my life. It was so bad and just everybody was slipping all over. It looked like one giant like slip and slide show. <laughs> yeah, it was a mess. Um but uh yeah I mean that's great. I mean I mean as you know as everybody knows my wife she's been my manager for last couple of years now. You know, uh, she was with me Every single show, if I'm not mistaken, with NEW. I mean, uh, she was my uh, life force, I must say, you know. She also helped me graze the little hell as well. So, um, 
thankful for that. Thankful for that. <laughs> um, but there are some lives that are um, very happy to just you know take the back seat, let their husband do what they're going to do, and and that and that works for them. I, my personality is not that way. I just I cannot help it. Um, I'm just more of a take charge, bossy kind of person. Uh, even when I try to curb it, it still comes out. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that firsthand. I've been yelled and screamed at many a times by you. <laughs> Usually it's playing the mama role more than anything else. It's like, look, dude, you're an idiot, you know? <laughs> um, most of us in that locker room feel like that. That's why we all call you mama. Because, it, you know, we became one big giant family. Hell, we still are. You know, it's been almost uh, a little over a year now since I've actually been inside a NEW locker room. And to this day, I still consider the NEW, you know, the locker room itself, my family, you know. Um, and That's the atmosphere that we try to um, convey. We want everybody to feel welcome. We want them to feel like it's, it's a family, you know. I mean, it is a business, yes, but... Um, we try to treat all of our wrestlers the same, whether you're new, whether you're old, um, you know, whether you're a vet in our company or just first coming in, you know, we treat you and try to treat you the same and, and you know, we want you to be part of the new family. And the same with our fans, with our audience, we want everybody to feel like, you know, they are part of our family. Um, we run a, a fairly family-friendly show. I mean, um, you know firsthand that I am a... I'm always a little particular about, you know, outfits that, that show too much and words that can be said or can't be said. I mean, we want the guys to be able to be who they are and to be able to perform, but we also want our audience to be comfortable and to, um, I want the average, you know, mom to be able to feel comfortable bringing her eight-year-old and her nine-year-old to our show and, and not see anything worse than what they would see, you know, um, Eight o'clock TV show at night, you know, a little bit of cussing, nothing over, nothing extreme. Um, so that's just kind of how we run everything. It's family centered. Yeah, absolutely, and I will totally agree with you with that. Uh, that's the way most indie shows should be. Um, you know, um, everybody's trying to outdo everybody instead of just putting on the best possible show. Right. And it uh, it kind of makes it hard for a lot of companies to to compete with that because it's like okay you know we're trying to do this we'll do it then stop talking about it and do it and uh it's a difficult business it really is you have to balance uh, there's a lot of balancing you have to balance um because you make friends you get very close to people but at the same time it is a business so you have to be able to walk that fine line between business relationship and friendship at the same time yeah absolutely um now, uh, <laughs> wow, just reading everything, man, brings me back, so. <laughs> back in 2013, um, we had kind of within a month, one, sh one company end and one begin. Um, now, for anybody who knows, uh, Costa Real Extreme Wrestling was very big uh, up until 2013 before they closed down the doors. Uh, they pretty much ran everything when it came to North Carolina. You know, if you weren't part of a new show, you weren't part of a show because these guys put on, at the same time, an amazing show. Um, well, of course, from my standards, you know, it was just a lot of blood and just a lot of, like, mayhem. <laughs> Uh, so to speak. Um, now, with that being said, the last show that Costa Rio Extreme had was Prison Wars. Now, from Prison Wars, we all remember what that was. It was like one giant ass kicking for every single person that was in that company. Um, and myself, Marty Reed, Johnny Reed, Kevin saying all four of us, we beat the holy hell for a good portion of two hours throughout that entire show, I'd say. Two out of the three hour show that we had. Um, now, knowing what everybody had done there, going back from, you know, Will Hockabee, 
Bo Crockett, uh, you know, John Deliberty, all those guys that have been with us through the transition and everything else like that from one company to the next. From the last show going into the first two shows of NEW, um, you know, what was that transition like for you guys, um, owners-wise, I should say? Um, it was nerve-wracking and, and exciting all at the same time. Um, listen, you know, it wasn't really the end of one company in the beginning. It was more uh, of just a, a company diverging. Um, you know, from what I understand, um, crew still has plans to run, and I wish them all the success. Um, it just was they wanted to go in one direction and some of us wanted to go in another direction. And so that was really all there was to it. And um, we just kind of had a, um, an idea of, of a new generation type of wrestling, you know, uh, again, appealing to the, uh, the smart wrestling audience and, a little, and to get a little away a little bit from the hardcore. And, um, and, and so that's just kind of what we, uh, what we, that was kind of what was in our head to do. And so that's just how it went. Um, really, that's, that's all I can see about it. You know, uh, it, was exciting, it was an exciting time, but like I said, it was also a nerve-wracking time because, you know, you want to do well. You want your first show to do well. You want to come. You're hoping that the message that you're trying to convey comes across. Uh, you, uh, and, and so that was, the, that was some of the fears of the first, the first show was, you know, are people going to get? Are they going to? Are they going to get what we're trying to put out there? <clears throat> I can definitely understand. Uh, that was a rough two shows for when the company first started. So uh, that I, <laughs> I can definitely understand that. Um, hey, from the the back of the four H building. Oh my God! <laughs> trying to take it, try to take those big giant bleachers and trying to move them into the other building. Or was that for, I think that was for the next show, actually. That was for the December show, I believe. That was, like, the hardest thing I think we ever had to accomplish was trying to move those bleachers and carry it all the way around outside. And if I'm, if, if I'm not mistaken, it was pouring rain out when we did that. Yeah, oh. but, but see, that's kind of a, that's kind of the running joke is that, oh, it's a new show, must be raining. Oh, it's raining, must be a new show. Yep. Because for the longest time... Every show we had, it was raining. Yep. Oh, yeah. And we figured, oh, great, it's not raining. God, there ain't going to be nobody here. <laughs> that was, that. yeah, that, that yeah, that, all right. My bad, okay? <laughs> For the longest time, I, I kept saying that until it was blue in my face. <laughs> and everybody hated me for it. <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, the, the, that, that, that joke was started by a lot of us because we all just got used to it. You know, like you said, it kept raining, kept raining, and kept raining. Didn't matter when. You got it, you know. Oh, you got your coffee. I'm glad to see that. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, um, coming up, October 31st. Uh, we're going to fast forward here a little bit. Um, actually, real quick, um, before we jump over, um, I really do want to... Uh, <laughs> Do want to switch over to these and <laughs> it, 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 look that was a coincidence i don't know why that's even up but i don't like that that just happened to be a co uh, coincidence what happened with my picture being up first i swear to you it's on shuffle <laughs> um but uh you know these are just some of the footage <laughs> and the pictures that were taken. Oh, God, I still can't talk to the guy face to face. Um, it was just some of the stuff that you know happened in the first two shows, stuff like that. Phil Brown. Um, uh, yeah. Good Lord, God, God. That mugs. Oh my God, yeah. Um, Phil Brown. God, what a match that was. Will Huckabee. Yeah, that was um, Joe Black. Uh, can I honestly can't remember her name? I think she did a couple shows with us, and that was it. Phil Brown smiling for the camera. Uh, my old tag team partner giving me an elbow. I mean, I I was kind of you know, I think I tripped there or something like that. I don't know. But uh, but fans, please don't pay attention to the HCW sign. That's my mistake. Somehow <laughs> jumped in there. This is NEW Next Evolution Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, we look confused, everyone. Yeah, I know. Hey, 
It's live, so I meant, uh, you know, meant to do that. <laughs> it's showing, uh, you know, a couple other companies how real companies run, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, that there's a couple photos from the first two shows ever of Next Evolution Wrestling. So that was a really fun time and a really hard time at that, you know. Uh, it was, but I mean, you know, those, you spend your first several shows tweaking how you want your product to be. Yeah. You know, actually, you spend more than the first couple shows because, I mean, we're going two years and we're still tweaking. Um, you know, I think that what people forget is we are still a very young company. Um, and, 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 you know, we're growing. We are in a small area, um, but we have very, very loyal fans. Our fans love us that, that are here. And so we're just trying to reach out a little bit and let other people know what kind of a product we've got going on. I mean, we've got some really, really great um, workers that work for us. We've got uh, Damian Wayne as our booker, and he, he just does some fabulous, fabulous job uh, with our shows. And um, it's just, you know, it's two hours of, of, of a good time. It really is. It's, it's well run. I think we've got that part down. Um, we start on time. We start on time every time. I think out of two years, we might have not started on time, maybe two or three times. That's it. We start on time. We try to get fans in there, get them having a good time, and still get them out at a decent hour so they don't feel like they're dragging a button the next day. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I could definitely understand that. Um, for those that are wondering what this is, this is uh, Next Evolution's fan page. Um right there on Facebook, so definitely go, if you guys are on Facebook, go and check these guys out, at Next Evolution Wrestling uh, organization, just look up Next Evolution Wrestling, you guys will pop up for their fan page as well. Um, so, uh, that is definitely uh, something to check out, because you guys will see all their upcoming shows, so forth and so forth. Um, old pictures, new pictures, stuff like that. Um, now, um, with it coming up, you guys got your two-year anniversary coming up. Um, any idea what the fans of NEW are going to be expecting when it comes to this uh, two-year anniversary? Any ideas? Um, not really. Um, well, we decided to combine the two-year anniversary show with the December show. Um, so it's going to be a kind of a combination show. It's going to be our two-year anniversary, but it'll also be a charity show. We, uh, we do two charity shows a year. We try to do one military-based show and then one child-based show. So our December show is always based for the kids. We take a um, collection and give it to the industry product. And um, so that's, it'll be kind of a combo show in December. That's December the 12th. Um, so, you know, I think that the fans, uh, there, we have some favorites that the fans like to see, but they also... You know, they're really liking a lot of the new faces that we're bringing in. And um, honestly, uh, you, just, I, you know, you just can't even, you can't even match that we have going on now that is, is not good. Uh, Dan Wayne is really, he is really putting on some high quality matches uh, into our program. And, and it's been great. Absolutely. Uh, I can't agree with you. Can't agree. agree. Uh, I, you know, it, it's just it, it's amazing the things that Damian Wayne has done since he's been with the company. Um, you know, he was brought in uh, last year, 2014. He was brought in as the uh, new Booker stuff like that, and uh, he has put on some amazing shows. Um, I try to catch the videos when they're on YouTube when they do get posted, uh, and uh, you know, I, I get to see some of the uh, the pictures. I get to see some of the. Uh, the fans reactions on Facebook and stuff like that so uh, I definitely have to agree Damian Wayne does a fantastic job yeah our fans seem to like a wide variety I mean they love the high flying that Sterling does and um, uh, Jordan Flight does and then you know they like to be all out brawling that goes on and uh, and the, 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 the old-fashioned good technical wrestling so they um, they seem to like it all and I think that our show offers all of that to them yeah, I I definitely agree. Um, hands down, definitely agree with that. Um, you know, like people always want to get get to the point to know what to expect when they go to a show, um, especially with the upcoming show October thirty first. Um, 
if you can uh, tell people a little bit about that show. Uh, we're really excited about the October 31st show. We know we're battling against trick or treat, so <laughs> what we're hoping is that um, parents will take their kids out, you know, take them around the neighborhood, get the candy, and then bring them straight over to the show. Um, if you come in a costume, a child that comes in a costume with a paid dog gets in free. So, um, and also we're going to have costume contests, we'll have goodie bags for all the kids. So we've got a lot going on that night. Um, we uh, may even have a face painter. Um, I've been contacted by somebody that wants to do some face painting, so there'll be a lot going on. Um, but as far as the show itself, we're going to be holding our um, tag team invitational tournament that we uh, started last year. And <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you already know why I'm laughing, but I I'm going to get that in a minute. Yeah, so we're going to be holding that, and um, we've got some, a great card. You know, we've got Phil Brown coming in, and we haven't seen Phil for a while, so we're really excited that he's coming in. Um, you know, of course, we've got the George Bulldogs. Um, uh, we've got the Safi, the Griff, um, the Danny Wayne, Bill Crockett. Bill Crockett's our next evolution champion. Um, so there's going to be there's going to be a lot of matches, a lot of great matches. There's Bo Crockett. Yep. Um, so there there's going to be a lot going on that night, and it's just going to be a, it's going to be honestly an action packed night from from the first bell to the last bell. It's going to be a great great night. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, I tell everybody every time I uh, you know I, I, I every time I go and do these shit, like announce the upcoming shows or anything else i always stress that enough to whatever show and especially your guys' show because i've been there i've been a part of it um i've been a part of the mayhem um and for those that don't know why i was laughing about the tag team invitational tournament um kind of ran into a little bit of prom back when i was part of new um you know knowing the background might be a little bit easier and to make it quick um back when i was with new they actually had a group called the yon the youth of a nation and these guys ran all over the place and ran all over everyone um at that time i was tag team champions part of anti-authority and uh they actually end up having a certain stipulation that kind of cross paths with my business and in the same time it kind of the long story short cost the company any control that they had um allowed uh martial law to take over which was our manager and then at that time he became the runner of new and um i'll clear the air right now hey you know all bad things aside, you know, I love NEW, but I had to do what I had to do. And, uh, for, I mean, not many people liked me afterwards. And, uh, you know, uh, I became one of the most hated people at NEW because it kind of seemed like I turned my back on the entire company. <laughs> so, but that's, uh, nor here or there, but, um, you know, on all aside, I'm glad they got they regained their control of their company and everything else as you can tell and I'm glad to see that and um, You know Definitely go check these guys out. These guys are amazing new next evolution wrestling these guys are absolutely fantastic when it comes to putting on a show um, Now before um, Before we continue um, Like I always do I want to be able to do a quick little commercial break type deal to where we're going to discuss uh, the upcoming shows as well. First and foremost, Fierce of Fears, October 31st, Tag Team in uh, Invitational Tournament, just like Miss Tracy said, over at the National Guard Armory in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Diamond, uh, you know, Damian Wayne, your champion, Bo Crockett. Southside Pro Wrestling. Saturday, November 14th, 7.15 bell time. Southside Pro Wrestling will be at the Warwick Rec Center. Uh, once again, guys got Bo Crockett, Luscious Lance. Season open, uh, as they would say. Uh, for RWA, you got a fusion owner and wrestler, Mark um, Memphis Mofo Mark, um, West Newton Gym in West Newton, Pennsylvania. 
19th anniversary show, Saturday, November 14th. This is Jersey All Pro Wrestling. It's a memorial show in honor of Fat Frank. He's one of the owners that had passed away recently. Um, I was part of their show a long, long time ago, so definitely go check these guys out. Once again, Southside Pro Wrestling, October 24th. They're going to have the uh, altered suspension, as they called, um, for Asafi and Doc, uh, for Diamond Victor Griff. Um, you know, Asafi's their world champion, thanks to a lot of things going on. Tag Team Tournament, Georgie Bulldogs, Sunday, October 25th, North Carolina, Salem, uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Go check these guys out. Funny, love their wrestling. And once again, we're back to here. So, um... We're gonna bring it back to Tracy real quick here, and um, the what? All right, that's fine. I agree with that. Um, oh God, I, I just lost my. I'm like, I'm blown away right now. <laughs> um. Going back to YON real quick, um, you know, whatever happened to them, how did that actually end up ending, <laughs> I should say? Um, they ended up uh, having to be uh, disbanded because they lost to the AHL. The AHL came back and uh, uh, Bax came up out of retirement and uh, had to teach some youngsters a lesson. Fair enough. That, uh, I can definitely understand that part. Uh, you know, Vax, I mean, that's a big boy, and I've taken his turkeys, uh, his gobble gobbles, whatever you want to call them nowadays. I've uh, taken the choke slam, I've taken their stupid little elbows that they give out. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's good to see that they dismembered and everything else like that. It's um, good to see. Those guys that were, I guess, holding each other back actually went off and did great things. Sterling Williams, you know, uh, Big MC123, and, um, you know, um, Marshall, I don't know if he's still running amok, I have no idea, but, um, you know, good for them. Uh, you got Joe King, uh, he's uh, doing his thing now, so um, very good to see those things going on, too. Um, Last but certainly not least, um, I ask everybody on my show this question, and uh, I would really love to get, really love to know what you have to say about this question. In your opinion, the big companies like WWE, TNA, you know, even even Ring of Honor for that matter, you know, do you think? that these companies can survive without indie wrestling, doing what we do. You think these companies can actually survive? Well, I think that WWE would, uh, just simply because they're already established, they've been here you know, forever, and they're the they're mainstream wrestling, so that's where your normal, average, everyday wrestling fan tunes in to watch wrestling. Um, Ring of Honor, no, because that's directly what feeds them into the indies. You know, you're, to the local gods, and that's what they aspire to. They, they, that's one step closer to the big time for them. And and so, you know, I feel like, you know, yes, it would survive, but it would take the heart out of it. Because I feel like, you know, even the big guys are still influenced by what goes on in the Indies. And, you know, you know, you hear all the backstories about uh, scouts from, from the big times going to scout around and, and, you know, watching Indie guys and then taking Taking some storylines, and you, you hear this, you hear guys joking about it all the time, but some of that is not necessarily a joke. I mean, they're probably, uh, it, in my opinion, really are. They, I'm sure that they have people that watch bigger indie companies, bigger regional companies, um, and watch for upcoming talent, watch for people that they should be keeping an eye out for, um, you know, storylines, you know, too, because Lord knows sometimes they need some help with their storylines. And um, so, no, I mean, I think that, yes, the big company would survive, but I think it would take the heart out of it. Um, so, that's my opinion. Fair enough. Absolutely. I could definitely understand that. Um, now, um, real quick, knowing what you know now, 
Ah, there's that smile. Knowing what you know now in the business uh, about wrestling, everything, knowing what you knew then, what would you change about this business? Oh, about the business. Business or even the indies, what would you do to, you know, in your in your opinion, knowing what you know now? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I think if I could change something about it, I think that I would want it to be more united. Um, you know, you have so many little companies around and... Sometimes the, the companies feel like they have to battle for their spot, almost, you know, almost like a worker. You know, they have to, to fight for that. And, and honestly, if, if these companies would just learn to kind of work together, um, much like the, you know, much like the bigger companies used to when they were in the different territories and everything, I think that, that they would find that, like our area, for instance, you know, we are so close to the Virginia line that we pull, we have some fans that come from, from Virginia, and we have fans that come from a little further south of North Carolina, and so, and we have a lot of the same talent that travel up and down the East Coast to all of these companies. And so, I hate it when fans have to choose where they want to go. And I understand with so many of us, it gets hard to stagger around your dates and all that. But I, I feel like you know, it's not a us against each other. I feel like it's us against them. It's us against the big guys because we want to keep. The indie business alive. We want to keep this because your local indies is where the, the real passion is. You know, yes, the, the big guys have passion, and you know, the big company, those wrestlers have passion, but they also have the money. You know, and that's a lot of what motivates things that happen in the big companies. But in us little indie companies, you know, you got guys that are busting their butt, putting their life on the line, and I know that you have some non wrestling fans, or even some wrestling fans that that kind of chuckle at that, but it is the truth. I mean. You don't know at any point in time when something could go wrong in the ring, when um, you could fall and hurt yourself, when you could, um, you know, when you could misstep and, and just, you know, a freak accident. And, and so you have the local guys that go out weekend after weekend after weekend. They leave their families. They travel all over the country, up and down the coast um, for not a lot of money. Most of the time, just enough to cover their expenses, honestly. It's definitely not a living. Um, but it's because they love the business. They, they love it so much, and it's just so ingrained in them. And so um, it's just their passion. And so, you know, I feel like these are the guys that um, that we need to kind of really keep in mind when we're, when we're battling out for our position as far as companies go. It's about them, and it's about the people that come to see them, the people that love them, that want to cheer them, that want to boo them, that want to yell at them. You know, that want to heckle them. This is what it's about. And sometimes I think that we lose sight of that because of it being a business. Because, bottom line, we have to make money. Or if not make money, we need to at least not lose money. And so sometimes I think that as a business owner, you get wrapped up in that a little bit. So sometimes you have to step back and remind yourself that, you know, why are you in this business? You're in this business because you love it. You're in the business because you have the heart for it, because you have the passion for it, because you want to please the fans. You want to entertain them, and you want to give them what they want, and you want to take care of the guys that want to give them what they want. And so you have to kind of balance all of that. And um, I think that sometimes we forget that. And so uh, that, I think that's probably what I would want to change is that mindset that it's us against everybody else, because it's not us against everybody else. I mean, I go and I support other companies. I go to tons of BCW shows and I'm down to Shockwave and, and you know, I go to as many shows as I can and, um, I, and especially if I'm invited, you know, if, if a promoter reaches out to me and says, hey, let me come to my show, then I'm going to go to your show. You know, I'm going to cheer and support and do all I can for your show. Um, and I feel like that's, that's how it needs to be. It's, it's not us against each other. It's we're all in this together. Absolutely. Absolutely, I couldn't have said it any better. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, I. That's why on my show I constantly remind people: go out, support your local indie wrestler, and support support your local shows, your wrestlers, uh, the promoters. Uh, whether you whether yourself is a fan or whether yourself is a wrestler or even a promoter, go out, support your local wrestling companies. I cannot stress that enough, and. Um, 
with that being said, um, before uh, before we leave and uh, we part ways here, um, <clears throat> I do want to uh, make an announcement about next week's show. Uh, next week, um, so excited! I got none other than the once again the next evolution wrestling uh heavyweight champion bo crockett as you can tell right there the ron Payne podcast show i think that's awesome picture i gotta thank uh you know the guys over at south side pro wrestling for that we got him on the show at nine o'clock um next weekend so definitely tune in for that we're gonna get to know bo on a personal level a professional level we're gonna see where he came from what he's about who he's been trained by we're gonna get to it all for you guys all live next week and uh, unfortunately, I don't have a, I don't have anything up for the gentleman yet. But in, uh, let's see here, in two weeks' time, from two weeks from today, matter of fact, uh, October twenty seventh, we are going to have the owner and slash wrestler actually of Southside Pro Wrestling himself, Mark Anthony, on the uh, Ron Payne show as well. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, we'll actually get to know his side of things when it comes to the business as well as uh, him being part of um, the company, being a champion in the company, not being a champion, what it takes to run his company, uh, the things that he's done in his life, stuff like that. So uh, next couple of weeks, we're going to really enjoy a lot of good things when it comes to the in the uh, side of things. So I, I, I personally can't wait for that. Um, <clears throat> and kind of hoping here in the next couple weeks as well, uh, we are actually probably trying to get in touch with a gentleman named uh, Axel Rotten for those that are big ECW fans and WWE fans. Um, Axel Rotten started off in the Indies, ended right back up in the Indies, but we, we appreciate it for everything that he's done in this company. Um, I've been in the ring with the gentleman and uh, can't wait to even get a response from the gentleman whether or not that he can do our show for us or not. So I'm really pushing for it. Hopefully I can. Um, <clears throat> from myself, Miss Tracy Anderson with uh, Next Evolution Wrestling, please go out, check these guys out. October 31st, National Guard Armory, Halloween night. And um, can't wait to see you guys again next Tuesday. Say that again, Tracy. No, I'm not actually. Okay, so Periscope is a live broadcasting app, and um, so I want everybody to uh, download Periscope and then check us out at um, uh, New e New Evo Wrestling. Uh, it's the same as our Twitter, and we're going to actually um, broadcast one of the matches live on the thirty first. We'll give you kind of a, a roaming view. Of the setup and um, we're going to kind of give you a, a room review from start to finish of, of how the wrestling show goes. I mean, we're not going to do the whole entire show, but we're going to give you a little snippet. So if you download Periscope and you follow us, then it'll alert you when we go live. And, that's awesome. Um, so that's going to be an interesting thing. Please, uh, please send that to uh, me as well. Send that to the, um, you know, uh, definitely. I'll, I'll put it on my uh, on my website for you guys as well. This way, um, uh, anybody that goes to the website, they know to go download that, and they can get all that stuff as well. This way, they can watch you guys live, and and heck, I'll be watching live. I can't wait. That's uh, definitely an experience. Any questions that email you? Say it again. We answer everybody's questions that they wanted to know. Well, I mean, believe it or not, we didn't get any emails. Um, th that's actually a first, but uh, that's actually a good thing because usually when they come in, they didn't stop for like twenty minutes the last time, and I couldn't do nothing. But They're controversial. I'm not a controversial. Oh, get believe me, they'll probably come after the show, <laughs> if not directly to you, one of the two. So we'll see about that. Uh, collected, non-bossy, non-controversial, cool, kind of person. Way out of line, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. We appreciate everything. You guys have a wonderful night, and uh, join us next week for uh, another edition of the Ron Payne uh, Show. Thank you, guys. Good, 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 good.
everything and anything you want to know right here on my podcast show. Ooh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, if my in-laws gets fun with weirdo friend requests, it'll be fun. Welcome to the House of Pain. Welcome to well, the Well, thanks for an opportunity to be on the podcast show. Podcast show.